Welcome to HQ Live. We are so excited to have you join us today. This is really live, so bear with us. Um, we are going to be covering the basting basics for stationary machines. Yep. So I'm Christina Whitney, a studio educator here, and I'm Kim Sandberg, studio educator at Handy Quilter. So again, this is live, live. So we will be answering questions and hopefully getting some fun comments from you. We'll be doing those at the end of the show. Anything else that we want to add before we jump in? Um, I think that's it. We're, oh. we're really excited to be doing this live. Yeah. yeah. What do you have to add? We also have a special kind of giveaway sort of thing yes. that we're going to talk about at the end. Yes. So make sure you stay with us. Yes. We have some very, a very exciting announcement to make. So be sure and stick around. Yep. All right. Okay. I think last week's episode of yes. Watch and Learn, we covered basting on a really big quilt. Yes on a frame mounted machine. Mm -hmm. So today we're gonna talk about some of those same techniques, but using it for a stationary machine. Right. Like our Amara ST. Yes. A domestic machine, mm -hmm. our Capri, Sweet 16. Um, also people that need to base their quilt sandwiches if they're using a little foot frame. Right. So Kim, I know that you've been working on some different projects for us. Yes, I definitely have. I'm really excited to show you guys, uh, just walk through some basic techniques for basting in all these different situations. But first, we're gonna start with talking a little bit about batting. So let's move over here to the table. And we've got uh, some different batting types here I wanna show everybody. Um, so we can kind of talk about some different choices that we have. So first batting that I'm gonna show you here, so this is like a regular 80-20. Um, so 80% cotton, 20% oh, polyester. This is a really great batting because it doesn't shrink a lot and it's actually pretty flat, which when you are doing <laughs> your basting or your quilting on a stationary machine, having your project being a little flatter is actually a little, makes it a little bit easier to work with. So we've got that 100% cotton would actually be very similar to this in look and fill. Um, over here, I have got wool. So wool is a fantastic batting. I love to use it because it really makes the quilting pop. Um, once again, one layer of wool is pretty easy to work with when you're uh, working with a stationary machine. It's pretty easy to move around. Um, sometimes we like to have a little extra pop, don't we, Christina? Oh yeah. With our quilting. <laughs> I think that we both have kind of become addicted. We tend to do two layers, um, especially for smaller projects that are gonna hang on the wall or do um, where we really want the quilting to showcase. Yeah. So when you do two layers of batting and you're going to be uh, basting it to do it on the long arm, don't forget to make sure that you get all the way through all of those layers as you're basting. And I have another tip for you with this when we get to talking about this next part. So I'm gonna move that one over. Here's a couple of other types of batting. Now, this one is a, actually, I think it is a cotton polyester. I'm gonna come in and fill is it. This, this is the one from Quilter's Dream. Um, that might be. This is nice white, white batting. Yeah, it's very soft. Now, if you're working with a project like I've got this block here, this is, because it's white, you can actually see a little bit of shadow from that off-white batting behind this. So sometimes you wanna make the splurge and actually buy the white, white batting for projects like this so that yep. you don't get a little bit of that shadowing coming through. Um, once again, this is a very thin batting and it's really easy to work with. So we'll set that one over here. Now the opposite of thin now, batting, what yes. do you have next? <laughs> this is 100%. <laughs> polyester. This is the poofy special <laughs> that I have. I have a couple of ladies that I quote for that really love this big poofy batting, but just beware when you're using a batting like this that has a lot of loft to it. This can be a little bit harder to manage when you're working with a stationary machine. Um, keeping everything smooth and moving around all those layers, it can be a little difficult. So this is one that you maybe need to do some extra um, basting with uh, just to make sure everything stays in place if you are going to use something like this. I would also really recommend using a glide foot when you're doing the basting. So it is doable. It's doable, it's yes. doable. You just need to be uh, maybe a little more attentive so that you make sure you keep all three of those layers very nice and flat. Can I talk about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For one second? yeah. 
What do you have um, to say about this batting? <laughs> so the first quilt that I did on a long arm, uh -huh. I used like the 80-20, the really thin one. Okay, so like this one right here. Uh -huh. Yep, and it was one of my okay. grandma's quilts that I was practicing mm -hmm. on. So yeah. I took it back to her. Mm -hmm. The next time I went to see her, oh, yeah. it was still sitting there. And she goes, you can take that back. It needs batter batting. Because <laughs> she was used, used to this, this high this. loft. I'm like, oh. Grandma, I know. I, you know, I have to admit, I grew up quilting. What, what we in my family called quilting, which was taking two bed sheets and actually uh -huh. tying them with yarn. This was the batting that we used, yep. and so I did think that was batting until I discovered other yeah. things. The only type yeah. of batting. I think we might have a question. Do we have a question? So we've actually got uh, our good friend Ashley, who has done a couple episodes with us here in the studio, and she's got this question for us. So Ashley, what's the question? Um, Janet, a friend Janet Lucari, mm -hmm. would like to know, is there a problem with bearding with the wool or the puppy? I don't even know what bearding is, so I'm fascinated. Okay, okay. So <laughs> Ashley, just to repeat the question. So uh, our friend Janet Lucari, which shout out to Janet, she always watches our videos yep. and comments. She wants to know if there's any problems with bearding with any of these types of um, battings that we're talking about. First of all, what is bearding? Bearding so, is when, what happens, Christina? Pieces of the batting, mm -hmm. like fibers get pushed through the yeah. backing yep. and you get like that little puffy ball yep. and then you want to pull it off yes. and it just pulls more batting out. Um, so I personally have come across that mm -hmm. when I've used uh, maybe a lower quality batting yes. and also a lower quality backing. I agree. With wool, I've never had an issue with it. Me either. But polyester, that can be an yeah. issue. So if you're using batting like this that maybe isn't as high of a quality, and especially if you're using, yes, right you here. You can see that gets coming off. That's, that's kind of what bearding does. And then it gets pushed through where the needle goes. Um, so, you know, buying... Uh, it, with quilting supplies, I think it's very true that you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. And if you're willing to spend a little bit more for better quality stuff, you should not have problems with birding. I've, I, it's yep. pretty, pretty rare that I have that. It's kind of a combination though. Yeah. Because I'll use the same batting mm -hmm. with one backing and it's fine. Right. With a different backing, I get the, the bearding. Exactly. So Exactly. So it's a combination of the batting and the fabric that you're using for the backing. So okay. we're going to talk about the first type of basting that is commonly used for stationary machines. And this involves a lot of pins. So Christina, you want to help me out here and we're going to, we're going to throw some pins in here. Now you can use all different size of pins and it's really important when you're doing the pins to maybe plan out your quilting a little so that you're not putting the pins maybe where you're going to be doing some quilting. Excellent point. So I'm going to put this, um, I'm actually going to pop mine in a little bit and put it inside here. And you also want to make sure that you're placing these pins um, far enough apart that they're not going to be a big issue while you're quilting, but at the same time close enough together to make sure that all three layers are going to stay together while you're quilting. And you've got stuff underneath, so I'm trying not yeah, to pin I know, more I know. than do, the three layers. We do have. So let's do, let's do one more pin up here. Okay. And then I would actually call this one um, pretty much pin, pin pretty well. I, right I personally don't like to put in a ton of pins just because um, without fail, even if I'm carefully planning, I will tend to put them in places where I need to stitch and then I'm having to stop and pull them out. Um, pinning is is a good option. I'm repinning. But are you going to repin? Are you well, going to follow your bit? example? Okay. She's going to pull it in a little bit. Um, so we'll show you. We'll show you. I'm going to. I'm going to actually do some basting on this one in just a couple minutes, and I'll show you a couple of tips on how to make sure all of this stays together. One thing that's really, really important always to remember: make sure that your backing is really nice and flat before you lay down your batting and then your quilt top on top of it and keep everything as flat as possible. I always like to do my basting on top of a table um, or like a, a big island in the kitchen, a big kitchen table, something like that. I find that if I do it on the floor, um, my dog tends to walk on it and then I end up with issues <laughs> in places. So I so. usually do mine on the floor or <laughs> used to. Um, Cause then I would have the carpet that would kind of hold the fabric in place. Okay. Or another thing that I used to do way mm -hmm. back when, when mm -hmm. I didn't have a carpeted floor space, I had like um, a wood floor. Oh, nice. And I would take 
guess what? Painter's tape. Painter's tape yep. and tape it down. And I would tape the backing down, make sure it's nice and smooth before I put the next layer yeah. on. And that would kind of help manage those larger quilts that I was pinning. Yeah, and that's, that is a really good tip. I've actually um, taped projects to tables. Yeah. Just, just like that. Yep. Okay, okay, so we'll go ahead and set these pins. I'll hand those to you. We can just set them down there at the end. Okay, so the next, the next one is we've got a couple of different types of batting that are kind of uh, tools in themselves. So this first one is, this is from Hobbs um, Heirloom, and it is fusible batting which means that it's actually got like a sticky fusible on both sides of the batting. So I actually um, pressed this one already. I thought about bringing one more piece of equipment in here while we're trying to do this live, but um, you can see that everything is very nice and flat. Um, I find the best success for, for using fusible batting is using it with smaller projects for me. Um, maybe some of you have had opportunities where you've been able to get it to work really well with bigger projects, but a smaller project and press the backing first, then put down the batting, put the quilt top on it and press it. And you'll notice that I really didn't leave a ton of extra batting around this edge here because I didn't want to worry about accidentally ironing over it <laughs> and getting my gumming up my iron because that glue comes off of it. Yeah, I would never do something like that. Yeah, never. never. <laughs> um, and here's, here's a tip for this too. So once I've got this all ironed out like this and everything's all fused together, what I do is I take and flip it over and press it again from the back to make sure that it's done. But remember, these little edges here are going to stick to your ironing board mat. So have I have like a, a, a sheet, mm -hmm. an old sheet that I keep in my, um, just in my sewing area, my quilting studio, and I will lay it down on top of my ironing board so that when I press, if the, any of this glue sticks to it, it's not sticking to the top of my ironing board cover because that's not fun to deal with, is it, Christina? No, nope. excellent tip. Okay, all right, we'll set that one to the side. Okay, this next one is actually a product that I just was introduced to. So I got to meet these guys at Houston. It was awesome. So this is called Birdie Bird Batting, and it is a special batting. It's made so that you don't have to um, do any pinning or uh, fusible or anything like that. I haven't, I'm actually excited to try it out with this project. But according to the directions, what you do, so this batting has, here, I'll pull up this corner here so you guys can see. It actually has a flannel here on the back. And you put your backing on the flannel side and you smooth it down and it does, it sticks really well. And then the type of batting that's in here sticks really well to it. And you can see that everything is nice and flat and smooth. They recommend while you're quilting with this, that you carefully fold it as you're working around and just working on one piece so that everything stays together in those layers. But it's really soft and beautiful. Um, it's easy to use. So that's excited. We'll have to um, do some more quilting with this one and return and report on a future episode. Yeah. On I, this one. When you were showing this to me the other day, I thought that the flannel was the backing. Yeah. I'm like, you well, could do that. And you know what? That's actually something that they mentioned that they do sometimes have people who will use this flannel as the backing for a quick quilts. And it is very soft. It's a soft white yeah. flannel. Um, it, it, it quilts up beautifully. I've seen examples um, of it. Okay, so I just saw Ashley. Ashley just raised her hand. Do we have another question? Yes, from Eileen Steinbeck. Which is better, having the rough side of the batting up or down when putting on the mm -hmm. long arm? So I was thinking maybe okay. we could talk a little bit about right sides. The two sides of the batting. Yeah, let's grab. So Christina, can we grab? Okay, so the question was, which side of the batting do you want to have up or down? So if we look at this piece of batting right here, this is what we would consider the smooth side. And then this is what we would consider the rough side. And this might be a little bit hard for you guys to see. Yeah. Um, so I've always been told that you do smooth side next to the quilt top and rough side next to the quilt backing. Have you been taught anything different, Christina? 
I've always been taught that we have cute little faces <laughs> and they have dimples and pimples. Yes. We want to see the dimples, which is the top. We don't want to see the pimples. So the parts that are poking out yes. is the rough side of the batting and that goes down where you don't see it. Exactly. So I think, I think so pimples. <laughs> hey, I got Ashley pimples, to laugh. <laughs> pimples and pimples. That's, that's, actually, I think that's a great explanation. Hey, you remember um, it, right? Most manufacturers recommend that you do it this way too, but, but here's a little tip. Our machines are, um, the way that they're engineered and the way that they stitch, especially if you're using a high quality batting, you really don't have to worry so much about the whole, um, whether the batting's right side up or wrong side down. Yeah. Honestly, that has more to do with if you're hand quilting, because it's easier to move that needle through that batting if you're going from the top down because of the way that the batting was created. This is how it was explained to me. Yep. When we're doing it with a machine, the machine can power through anything. So And correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but the wool batting and the polyester battings and some of those others, mm -hmm. they're not needle punch. No, so they're you not. don't have that up and down side. So it doesn't I, matter. Exactly. So if we look at this wool here, you can see that the surface on this side is exactly the same as the surface on this side. I mean, I yep. can't, I, there's there's no difference between the two. So I think it, it just depends on how it's put together, whether the batting has a scrim or if it's needle punch, which I think this is needle punch mm -hmm. and then this one would have a scrim. And I'm probably saying that wrong, but you know, we'll- Just put the batting in, it'll work out. <laughs> it'll work out. <laughs> okay, so my last method, not last, but uh, second to last method of, of basting, which I've done with this one, is actually using um, basting spray. So I quilted on my domestic machine for like a decade before I started. Um, I had saved up enough money to buy my first long arm. This is probably familiar to a lot of you. And this was my best friend. I love using the spray basting. It doesn't mean that I haven't used all different kinds, but the spray basting is really great because it, it, you can peel it up and put it back down again and it sticks. It's kind of like a post-it note. Yeah. Um, a couple of tips with this. So what I like to do is I spread, I put out my backing first and then very smooth and flat on a, on a smooth flat surface. Um, I do not like to do this on carpet because it's too um, bumpy like hardwood floor, mm -hmm. tabletop, things like that. So I do it here, you spray the fabric, not the batting. So you, you spray this and then you lay your, your batting down. Now this is the biggest tip to making this all work. So you always wanna smooth from the center out to the edges. Because okay. if you start smoothing in like this, you might end up with a wrinkle in the center. So remember to always smooth from the center out. And then when you put your quilt top on, lay the quilt top down, wrong side up, and spray the back of it, and then lay it down on top of this. And yeah. here's, here's a little tip. I'll have um, Jacob pull out just a little bit. So what I like to do is I will actually lay it out like this so that the it's folded in half and it's positioned correctly on the batting. I will spray this half and then I will smooth it down and if I kind of have my hand here, and this works really well on smaller projects, I can just smooth it down like that and it sticks really well. And then I'll repeat the same thing on the other side um, so that it is centered and properly positioned as I'm smoothing everything out. Yeah, I like to use that same technique on mm -hmm. larger quilts also. Yep. I found you always have better success with the basting when you're starting at the center. Yes. And just work in a section that's comfortable. Yep. Like if you try to spray the entire quilt and then uh -huh. lay it out, you're just mm -hmm. going to have a mess. So just spray a little bit, yep. work out Smooth from the center, out. spray the next section, yep. spread it out. Exactly. Exactly. So those are, those are tips there. Okay. I've got another tip with the spray. Okay. Make sure that you are not working on a surface that you can't get the spray on, I was just including your clothing. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, you don't want to like actually be like over spray mm -hmm. and get the sticky stuff all over like your countertops right. or fine right. furniture or yeah I know, flooring sorry I know <laughs> that when I when I did this a lot and especially when I was doing larger quilts I would set up a couple of like just the, the big tables that you buy from Costco in mm -hmm. my garage 
because that way I didn't have to worry if it got on anything. Um, I could spray. I also, that way I wouldn't get a little happy off the fumes <laughs> from the basting spray. Yeah. It was in a well-ventilated area. So. Yeah. So, so like how you were talking earlier with putting a sheet over mm -hmm. your ironing board, yeah. sometimes I will do that. I'll put down like a, a layer oh, of fabric smart. or something and then put the quilt over top yep. of that. So very good Just, tip. Yep. Um, one last tip with the basting spray. Don't spray next to your machine. So if we move back over here to the machine, um, you do not want to set up like, for example, right here and do some basting spray on a on a quilt block right here because you don't want to risk getting any of that sticky on yeah. your machine yep all right so let's talk about the last method for basting that you can do and i'm gonna okay let's give a little adjustment here i love this okay. with the lift table so the lift table raises up and down at the push of a button love so it. cool love it i adjust it often just because i can <laughs> it's really fun so the the last method of basting i want to talk about is actually basting on the machine so like the amara st it does actually have a basting stitch so if i change my stitches down and i've got let's do a half inch basting stitch on this okay. one so um, when you're basting you uh, with stitches, um, but with stitching, you always want to consider the manufacturer's suggestions for the batting that you're using. How far apart the like minimum or maximum distance should be. And that's usually what I will baste around. So if it says uh, don't quilt any farther apart than six to eight inches, I would not do any basting farther apart than eight inches. So I keep it yep. somewhere in there. So when we're basting, let's let's go ahead here and we'll just we'll just do a little bit here to show you guys. Now I'm going to ask you a question real quick yes. for our viewers. You've already pinned. Mm -hmm. Do you always baste with one of the items that we already talked about before you come and baste on a stationary machine? Um, do I always baste all three layers together? Um, I usually do. I okay. usually have all three layers um, at least stabilized in some way. I mean, if it was like this project, actually just this block is actually small enough that I could bring this one and just do it here. Okay. But if I'm doing anything bigger than probably this, I'm going to stabilize it in some way before I bring it to the machine, even if I'm going to machine baste it. And um, just some pins, a few pins to hold it in place can just help keep everything smooth so we don't end up with any wrinkles in the backing, okay. especially. So right? the next question then mm -hmm. is, what is the purpose of quilt that you're basting it on the machine if you've already basted it with pins or spray basting or one of those other methods? So for me, um, actually using, especially with pins, okay, if I've spray basted it or I've used the fusible batting, I, I'm not going to do any additional basting when okay. I bring it to the machine except a trip around the edge, which I'll show you in just yep. a minute. Um, but when I do it with pins, I always like to go through and add a little bit of extra stability with some stitches, especially if it's a bigger project and I know that I'm going to be pulling it out, working on it, yep. folding it back up and putting it away because it's just more likely to keep all three of those three layers together nice and flat the way that they should be. Perfect. Like my clapping there. Excellent. <laughs> it's excellent. Okay, mm. so let's go ahead and I'm gonna do some basting across here. And you guys will see that I'm actually using, oh, Christina just hit my thing. Sorry, I'm trying oh, to okay. give you your foot pedal. <laughs> Sorry, okay. we're live. <laughs> we are live. And of course, because we're live, my bobbin is not participating right now. So I'm going to let Christina fix that really quick. You guys, While I'm really fixing it, do you want to really talk fun. about, oh, wait, we yes. got a question. Okay. Um, just your thoughts on doing that. Yeah. Um, you know, when you were talking about the spray basting, mm -hmm. uh, a few people asked this question. Okay. This one from Debbie Lacey was, doesn't the spray gum, uh, doesn't the spray gum up the needle on the top? No, it's actually one of the things I love best, especially that particular brand that I showed. It does not gum up the needle. Um, if you find that you are having some issues, if, if you find that you put on too much, it might gum up the needle a little. And if you just use an alcohol wipe, you can easily clean your needle off. So that works. Um, hopefully that answers that question. So let's talk about thread for a minute. Okay, let, let me ask a question. What was wrong with the bobbin? <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't picking up. Okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't, just, I wasn't getting a stitch created. We okay. just stuck it back in. We'll see. So, um, what kind of thread 
should we be using for basting? Okay. So Christina's got like the perfect answer for this. And I'm going to go ahead and do some basting while she's okay. talking about that. So the thread that I like to use with basting is the thread that I don't like. Mm -hmm. It's just some crazy color that I use for one quilt. Mm -hmm. And I've got a ton of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use that up with basting. I also like to use a color, if possible, that um, is a high contrast to my quilt top so mm -hmm. I can see the basting really easily so that I can remove it better. Yep. So bobbins, same thing. Yep. I just use whatever loose bobbins I've got that I want to use up and get them out of there. I totally agree with you on that. So you can see that I'm using a lime green thread here, which is going to be easy to see to pull out. And you guys will see here, so I'm doing what I like to call my uh, kind of trip around the quilt. So whenever I baste, especially a smaller project, I always, no matter what type of basting I've done, if I've done the spray basting or fusible or anything like that, before I start stitching anything, I am going to do a basting stitch all the way around the outside edge. This is going to help keep everything where it's supposed to be. It'll keep the edges from flipping up. It just it just kind of locks everything in place. It's a nice so. frame to work mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Now, Kim, mm -hmm. did you know that we've got a product that you can use to hold that fabric so your hands aren't cramping up? I was just hoping that you had something <laughs> great for me. So let's talk for a there. minute about the sweet spots. So the sweet spots are really awesome. They have this great grippy little um, uh, plasticky stuff on the back. I don't even know what yeah, it's, it's called. It's almost like a, a leathery feel yeah, almost. Yeah, but it allows me to put these on the quilt and they make it so easy to move it along without having to put as much pressure on my, and I just gotta keep that there, without having to put as much pressure with my hands on the fabric. So they are really great just to keep things where they belong. So those are fun. They are really fun, aren't they? All right, I'm gonna okay. do just a little bit more here. My last little bit, I'm just gonna set those out of the way. My little edge keeps popping up just a little bit, so I'm getting my hands in here. And I'm sorry if I'm making anybody nervous. I don't mean to be. I know sometimes when we're stitching on camera, people <laughs> people tend to get a little. Your hands are too close. Your hands are yeah. too close. My favorite is you're gonna stitch your hair. <laughs> I don't usually have that problem, but Christina does. I, she I've leans actually over had, a little bit too much. I had a client quilt that I shipped back to her and she texted when she got it. She's like, I got the quilt and I also got your hair that came with it. <laughs> Luckily so it was great. a good friend. So. That's always the best, it's <laughs> always the best. So I've got this piece uh, basted now and it's ready to stitch. I could, at this point, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and pull these pins out and I could just have some fun doing lots of fun, great free motion quilting on this. Excellent. And again, it is, a product or pro process mm -hmm. that works for basting for stationary machines, mm -hmm. domestic machines, yeah. little foot. I mean, you can do a lot with these different yeah, techniques. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a great idea um, too, if you like to do handwork. So for example, if you were going to be doing say some um, wool applique or something like that on this, or you were going to just be doing a little bit of hand stitching mm -hmm. as a, uh, a feature in the quilt, um, doing some basting beforehand to hold everything in place so that you can stitch through all those layers easily. It's, yeah. just, a, it's just a great way to stabilize the quilt. Excellent. Well, thanks for sharing all those tips with us. Yeah, and I know at the beginning we gave a little teaser. I know you have did. to stay on because we're going to answer questions and then we have something for you. Yeah. But um, Ashley, do you have some more questions for us? Oh. Okay. Um, I don't, we don't have a link for this. You can buy this. I always buy it from my local um, quilt shop. So I buy it. Here in Bountiful, Utah, from my local quilt shop, it's called 505 uh, Temporary Adhesive, and it is is really great. There's actually a few different brands yeah. out there. There's, there's lots of different brands. This this isn't the only one. It's just the one that 
the can of it we happen to have in the <laughs> studio. But um, it's really great for just holding everything in place. I know that I even use this when I'm doing um, hand applique mm -hmm. just to initially hold things in place, especially larger pieces. It's really great for that. Yep. So this right here, here we can have Jacob do a nice little close up of that so everybody can see. So that's what it's the 505 um, temporary mm -hmm. adhesive spray. Yes. Okay. Any other questions, Ashley? Um, is, the spray permanent? is the spray permanent? No, it actually washes out and it, um, but it stays on for a really long time. So I actually had, this is, this is really great. So, um, my family and I lived in North Dakota for a couple of years, about a decade ago. And when we moved up there, we moved from a nice big house to a little teeny tiny trailer, <laughs> 700 square feet we squished into. So we put most of our stuff into storage. I actually had a quilt that I had spray basted, a twin size quilt that I spray basted. And I folded it up and put it in a box because we were, we were just positive that we were not going to be in that trailer for very long. We didn't think we'd be there for two years. We thought we'd be there for two months. Um, by the time we finally moved at the end of that two years and I unpacked it, it was still stuck with the spray basting. And as a matter of fact, I even like peeled off part of it and repositioned it and like smoothed it back down and it still had the sticky. So wow. it's not permanent, but it does stick around for a long time. Yeah. I think it even says it's temporary spray. Yeah. So yeah, it's not okay. permanent. Here's another good question. Okay. From Michelle Pendleton. Mm -hmm. Do you ever use a water soluble thread for basing? <gasps> oh yes, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. So Michelle Pendleton just yes. asked if we ever use a water soluble thread mm -hmm. for basting. And that is a fabulous idea. Yes. Um we do. We we don't recommend it for swimwear. <laughs> It actually says that on the label, but yes, um, you know, I don't know why I didn't even think of that. Yes. Yeah. Water soluble thread is a great idea because you do have to go back through if you are, you know, these stitches on it, unless if it's just the stitches right close to where the edge of the quilt is, you're going to have to go through yeah. and pull them out at some point. That water soluble is pretty cool because you lay the quilt out, you spritz it with some water mm -hmm. and then you just grab that thread and pick it up and it just lifts off and it's like magic. So when you're saying you pick the thread and pull it off, so usually you put the water soluble on one side mm -hmm. and then just a yep. regular thread. thread, like in the bobbin, mm -hmm. not both yeah. top and bottom. Exactly. And so when the one disappears, the other one's it just free to come off. Pulls right off. So. So yes. yes, excellent suggestion. Boy, Thank you. Thanks for catching that. Cause that's yep. definitely one I did not even think of. We, and yep. I, I have used it with a lot of success in the past. Okay. Any other questions? Should we do like our giveaway thing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you we'll show everybody. So we have a brand new, that, camera? that we, uh, something that we are premiering. So we are going to start having patterns available. So we are going to be having a quilt along. And we'd like to invite you all to join us. This quilt is called uh, Seeing Stars, and it's designed by Christy McDonough. And this is a pattern that is originally from Martingale, and Handy Quilter has acquired a bunch of these patterns. And we'd like to invite all of you to quilt along with us. Now, Christina, if they're gonna quilt along with us and make this quilt, what do they need? Well, they need to download the free pattern. Mm -hmm. And when I say free, it's only free for this week. Yep. So next Tuesday, January 31st is the last day that you can get it for free. Yep. After that, you'll have to purchase it for $5. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to put a link in the description of where to get the downloadable file. And once you have that pattern, yep. you'll need your fabric, of course. Yes. And then a good attitude. <laughs> yes. yes. So, and then we'll, we'll quilt along together. So let's talk about fabric for a minute. So okay. we, we as a team actually got to pick out this, uh, this pattern, which we're very excited about. And we are going to uh, quilt along starting next month when we do our next live, we'll do a check-in mm -hmm. and, and see where everybody is. But I'll still Christina, be right here. <laughs> yeah. So Christina, what fabric have you picked? Well, we talked about my blues quilt yeah. um, on the first episode and how I'm, I'm like obsessed with blue and I've got to get out of that blue. Right. I don't want to call it a funk because it's not a funk. I love everything it. Everything <laughs> you make has blue in it. <laughs> yes. So I asked our viewers to challenge me yes. and pick colors that are not in my no normal color palette. Right. 
So I'm going to make a quilt with no blue in it. Mm -hmm. And so the colors that were suggested were the purples and greens mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. pinks. So I have this little um, layer cake. Fat quarter stack. Fat quarter stack. <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what call, what's it called again? Fat quarter stack. And so these are the fabrics that I'm going to use. I probably won't use all of them, but mm -hmm. this is what I'm going to be pulling from. I love it. So. I love it. Um, and I'm still kind of working on mine. I know that I want to do mine in solids. So I've got this fun uh, fat quarter stack to show off. <laughs> I'm bigger than yours. I know. Yours, <laughs> is, yours is way bigger. Um, I don't know that I necessarily want to do kind of the rainbow colors. I'm, I'm actually leaning towards doing it maybe with just three colors. So my quilt, my finished quilt is probably going to look a lot different than the, the way the pattern is just because there's going to be a... a a little bit of a different emphasis just with some some different uh, fabric placement but um you'll need to tune in again next month when we do our next live we're going to start doing a live once a month again um we're not going to commit to a specific week you'll know you'll know beforehand because we'll make sure when you start when you see that hq live symbol from here on out you'll know that it's going to be um, at least a couple of us studio educators live and we'll be doing check-ins on uh the seeing stars Quilt pattern. We're very excited about it. Um, we have a few fun comments. Okay. Okay. Says, um, I think you will be miserable without adding some blue. Make yourself happy. So Janet Lacari. <laughs> uh, oh, no, Janice Carroll. Oh, Janice, oh, Janice Carroll. Janice Carroll did a great um, comment. She <laughs> said that she thinks Christina will be miserable if she doesn't. <laughs> you know, mm. put a little blue in there. Maybe I'll put a blue label on the back <laughs> or maybe go. I'll stitch it with blue thread. <laughs> I'll sneak it in. also says, I'm also recovering from a blue fixation. <laughs> and um, Chris Cynthia Wilson says she can't wait for a quilt along. So people are excited. Yay! About hey. this. Okay. Excellent. So people are saying that you're excited. Um, was it Vicki that you said is recovering as well from a blues? <laughs> Blue yeah. Addict, yep. Okay. Yeah. It's a real thing. It is. Yes. It is for Ooh, some people. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. We've got a challenge. Um, Heidi and Sean Helms. <laughs> oh, no. I challenge Christina to make a purple quilt. Ooh. <laughs> Heidi, this is close enough to purple. You already have your purple quilt I made you. <laughs> That's so, a fellow uh, HQ employee yeah. throw, throwing down a challenge there. Thank you, Heidi. Oh, and someone else we know. Kayla says, Christina and no blue. What? Or yellow. Or yellow. Yep, that's my second color. Yeah, yeah. so Kayla, <laughs> who was our previous um, queen of filming, as we like to call her, just commented mm -hmm. and said that she knows Christina, no blue, yeah. no yellow. Mm, that, that does not make a quilt for Christina. Okay, we'll so see. I really realized my illness when we were doing a tour in the filming or in the education yeah. studio and one entire wall was all my quilts and every single one of them was blue. blue and yellow they looked beautiful together though <laughs> they really did they really did all right we've okay. got another comment Okay, so one more time, where will they be able to find the link for this pattern? The link is going to be put in the description. Is that correct? Later. Yep. Later. Yeah. Maybe like five, ten minutes. Maybe give us an hour because it's lunchtime and we haven't <laughs> yeah. eaten. That's right. We haven't. So it's our lunch break. Okay. So find your pattern. Yep. Get your fabric. Yeah. Start working on it. Next time when we have our live, we'll show you where we're at. Yeah. And I don't know if people can post pictures of where you're at, but you can always use yeah. the hashtag handy quilter yep. so that we can see where you're at along the process. But we're so glad that you joined us for this live live and make sure that you have fun quilting.